Hey, buddy. How's it going? It's going well. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. It's a Tuesday afternoon. You and I, I know we're both very equally excited uh, for this so recording, excited. for this interview. And uh, we're just not even going to beat around the bush. We're just going to get right to it. And we're going to bring in our good friend, uh, Brian Flynn. Brian, thank you so much the for being here, Brian being Flynn. on the show, taking the time. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, one of the really cool things that happened over the weekend was um, I stumbled across your, the article that you just did with Revolver. Uh, yes. And uh, that, that was pretty recently. And I, I was like, I immediately sent it to Greg. I was like, dude, check this out. This is really cool. And I learned so much. I did not know that your wife was a part of Super 7. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, you know, she, she doesn't have a wall of toys necessarily behind her <laughs> but yeah no everything is the two of us have always done everything together so you know if we go to the way back days you know i met her in college and then uh we were both in design school uh i left and went worked at nike for five years but as soon as i left you know she came uh up the following year interned there and then got a job there we both worked there for five years we came here we opened up uh, the design studio together and super seven was the thing I sort of started on the side, you know, you know, so she's always been, you know, it's always all been part of one big hole. So it I is, that story. Uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to quite sort of frame it up as, you know, other than just like, yeah, it's like, you don't get one without the other kind of thing. Everybody's yeah. got, their their yeah. better half if you will and then, well it's nice yeah that you no, can, that's go ahead yeah, go ahead i was gonna say it's nice that you have your partner and you can bounce things off or you know talk about this or that are you guys is one more like business minded and as the other one is more like emotional or um <laughs> well there, there's definitely it, it depends on what it is um you know but there's definitely a bit where it's a little bit of keeping me honest in some ways mm -hmm. you know like, all right, I, I realize you're excited about that, but you have 10 other things already planned. So which eight are you going to do and not do that one? You yeah. know, there's some of that. But there's also the same things like, you know, it's like, you know, this can be done later. Or or pointing out the things where I, I say sometimes um, I get so in the weeds sometimes that you need somebody that can take a step back and go like, you're, you're spending all this time worrying about mm -hmm. like how the fingers are bent on this hand you know and you're not looking at the whole of it like you need to step back and look at this not you know because yeah. we all can sit here and be like you know it, it's important stuff to us but like same thing like if we're talking about kenner versus mattel it's like well that's a 2.5 millimeter hole in the foot versus a three millimeter hole in the foot and you know if you have yeah. the wrong size you know it's just like does it have a hole let's start with do you need a hole <laughs> Like so you maybe get lost it doesn't need a hole in the foot. You get lost maybe. in the minutia and she'll give you like perspective, like, hey, let's focus on, you know, bring you back. Let's focus on what's important. Uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely some of that. And and just, you know, also just being involved. Like if you watched everything this leading up to Comic-Con this year with the puppets and everything, like Dora was doing all that. Mm -hmm. All of that was her and That's her awesome. team following through with that. That's awesome. I love so got the, these great love puppets. The we need to use them. Yes, but, absolutely. Yeah. Those are awesome. I look puppets. forward to them every year. Yeah, you know, yeah. Every fun. year, I'm like, what are they going to do this year uh, leading up to San Diego Comic Con? Yeah, I felt like a kindred spirit with you because that's exactly um, what I did. I I went to college for design uh, and went straight into uh, I interned in, in advertising and I came up through advertising and it's the only job I've ever done. It's what I do now. I just I used to do it for you know businesses, but now I do it for higher education and now I I work in the advertising office for. Uh, a major university so so yeah i mean that's i've always had a hand i mean i'm a graphic designer so design is just that's what i do and uh on the side i draw comics and i know exactly what you're talking about with the minutia because i can draw now that i draw digitally like i'll draw a line three or four times i'll erase it and draw it and erase it and draw it my wife will be like what are you doing like does it matter like somebody's going to look at that image for like half a second before they move on to the next panel i'm like yeah but i know it it's wrong like it yeah. is right to me so. well it, it, it's not so much whether it's right or it's wrong in some cases it's just uh are you are you losing the plot for lack of a better description? right yep 
and uh yeah um and quite frankly as i say to everybody like people like me i'm nice but people love dora she's so much she's way better than i am there you go way better way better. yeah 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 i think i think that's probably the the same with all of us with our better halves so uh i just want to congratulate you you guys had a, a good um san diego comic con like the coverage was great you guys had yeah. a great showing super excited that's uh I'm, <laughs> my goal is to like one day get there but i have friends that, who live in la and they go it's to the comic con and they just it's, they just tell me horror stories about how uh, how busy it is, how packed it is. It's busy and it's packed, but there's not a single person that's unhappy to be there. Absolutely. It's a joyous well experience. Well said. It, yeah. it is so much fun. And yeah, there's lines and there's people and there's stuff, but there's never a time where you're in that line and you're like, this sucks, get me out of here. You're like, <laughs> dude. Right. And you're talking to the person next to yeah. you in line. What did you get? What did you, you know, what's going on? What did you see? Yeah. All right. You know, it's right. just, yeah, it's an onslaught. I and I appreciate that you are that you go to the different shows. I've met you at PowerCon and you signed a Panthro and I met you at New York Comic Con and you signed my my Godzilla. Oh so man. I I and you're always like you want me to do that? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm still like, oh, yeah. yeah you want me but to I that? I know you being a, mar a marketing you know doing the packages and stuff that you know you're de defiling the package but I just <laughs> You know, I appreciate I appreciate you being there and 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 talking to me for thirty five minutes at New York Comic Con or something. It just that means but, a lot to us as fans. I but uh, what more what more can I ask to do? Right? How much fun is that? We like, appreciate it. We appreciate that's, that. That's that's part of it. It's like it's not like oh, I gotta go to this con comic convention or toy <laughs> convention and talk to people for, for work. three days about toys and look at all these vintage booths full of other stuff that i might good stuff. have oh god it's it, like, are you kidding it's like it's, it's, it's right. a party yeah, I get yeah. Crazy. This, this is crazy we, we well the reason it. i brought up the um the revolver article is because i kind of wanted to get into some of our questions that we had prepared for you um and um and i just wanted to start off by asking you know since that revolver article was kind of like a, a throwback and a look back at you know your overall career like how you got from where you were to where you are now like maybe you could talk about can you pinpoint like any one particular thing that stands out as like your proudest achievement um you know uh in your toy creating career so far my toy creating career i, I think the funny part about my toy creating career if you want to call it that is that obviously I, I wasn't, this wasn't my industry. This isn't was what I did. This isn't where I came from. I just, I was somebody that enjoyed this stuff. So I just started doing stuff. And we talk about the magazine and it start there and other stuff. There was never a thought that this was the plan. It was more like, I just want to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think the thing I come back to so much is it's really about the doing. If you do it enough, that's what people know you for. I mean, quite frankly, I have maybe 50-50 at this point, but like, I, there's probably more stuff I've done in graphic design that people know of that just don't know it was me, that I'm mm -hmm. more well-known in that world than this one. Does that irk you? or I mean, No, I don't care. What does it matter? Like, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, but it is a thing where it's just like, I wanted to make stuff and I made it happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I would have been just as happy if I'd only made a few things and people, you know, liked them and got a run and that was it. So, like, you know, when I'm talking to people that are trying to start up or kickstart some of their own toys or doing something different, like, um, um, blanking on his name right now and i apologize i do this to people's names all the time uh the guy that makes all the uh western figures uh, i can't remember is, is that like is that like uh i don't know if that's, that's not fresh monkey fiction is it no it's not fresh monkey oh, no. um it is uh his name's john I'm blanking on the line name of his lines because i don't collect western figures but he just makes mm. western figures uh they're I'm really well done them. you know it's a very tiny small market mm -hmm. but you know, I'll tell him things and tricks that I've learned or whatever, but it's like he's making what he wants. Mm -hmm. It may never make him rich and famous. Not that that's the goal, but the point is, is like, but he's, he is literally creating 
the the moment for an opportunity to happen mm -hmm. meaning if he didn't do it all those guys that buy his toys that do love western figures would never get that opportunity right uh, i'll use sure. a bad example that will sound arrogant to somebody but it's like reaction figures five poa figure like i made those because that's what i wanted no, the market was not asking for it if you will if you're talking about it from a business sense and it's gotten to the point now where you know lots of other people also you know lots of other toy companies make five poa throwback figures you know that is all downstream from me pushing that issue and i'm not trying to make it about me but you asked about me but mm -hmm. no you're, saying, like, you're, you you're here of? we want to hear from you you know you know what are you proudest of but it's more just that it's shock it's surprising to me and i'm trying to lean into it a little bit more now just like we have the opportunity to change the nature of the discourse of what gets made absolutely so, so has has reaction like being in walmart and target and stuff like that or or you having like i've seen your ultimates in in walmart and reaction at target like has that helped your brand recognition and is is it worth the the effort that you put into getting in there uh there's a bit of both um you know the reality is for most I, I assume even for you guys that are die hard you still want to walk into a store and buy something off the shelf don't you absolutely I mean, satisfying yeah, I mean, so yeah, absolutely so in that regard those those are those two real doors that have played to 90 percent of the people that buy toys because if you want a new reaction from me you can buy it for me today on my.com you could have mm -hmm. it but you want to walk in the store and get it there's still yes. something about that and so instant gratification i think even, i think there's a thrill of the hunt part like what am i going to find today yes and, that's you know, true too what's yep. going to be here oh, the shelves are empty again the shelves are empty again oh look they restocked or whatever so in that regard i'm really very rarely in those conversations the vast majority of the product i make is not there so for a lot of people i think that are aware of our brand they still don't really buy anything from us because they see it they see it online but because they can't walk into target and walmart they can't actually participate in collecting with us i think when i find that people do finally get a piece or two then they're like oh okay now i understand what this is and now i'm willing to if i can't find it in a store i'll buy it online or whatever else um so i i think you know the hardest part there is just having those opportunities uh for everything mm -hmm. okay i you got the okay we're good I'm literally like kid pickup notes being passed <laughs> to me like i'm getting the other two you get this one i'm like okay that's the yes, nice. That's all right. Oh yeah, yeah, I I do the same thing. Yeah, we have three, and we had, they're all split up between me and my wife dropping them off in the mornings, and me and my wife and my mom picking them up in the afternoons. It's, <laughs> well, yeah, we, we divide have, and conquer. We have three as well, but it's now this is the first week of school, so we're not in a routine yet. And like, okay, one's got cross country today. Yesterday was cross country plus two soccer practices. Today's only cross country, but tomorrow's cross country, but two soccer practices at different times and different locations. Oh, yeah. this time. oh my goodness. What, once you get into the, yeah. like the routine of it all, then it's no big deal, but it's establishing the routine. Um, yeah, absolutely. But you Can know, I, absolutely. I, I, no, I totally so understand. to close the loop on our earlier conversation or the earlier rant thing that I was talking about was, you know, at one point I was talking to somebody at Hasbro and I said, I would love to bring back Kenner and do some stuff with Kenner. And he was like, to be quite honest, there's no reason to do it. He goes, reaction is more synonymous now to that form factor than Kenner was. And I was like, yeah, that's wow. a crazy statement. Okay. But, it, you know, if you really look at it historically in that 5 POA format, going backwards, you know, across all licenses through the 70s and 80s, you know, you're talking about, 250 different yeah. SKUs, probably. You know, there's Star Wars at 128, mm -hmm. whatever. I can't believe I say that, whatever. Like, I don't remember it. Like, I'm here, I'm <laughs> back, Power of the Force anymore. Like, I've forgotten. It's been so, so long you, since I bought So you're like figures. the Kenner of now. Well, we've done, we're you're, like you're 1,500. Past. Reaction figures are more than 1,500 SKUs at this point. insane. 
That's so we you you look at it that way. We've made six times the amount of five POA figures than were made in the seventies and eighties. That's, I can't even that's grasp insanity. It. Yeah, that's I know, right? Like that. that. That's crazy. And to think, you know, like, and you know, it wasn't that long ago that Hasbro started putting out five POA retro figures. They're like, let's, you know, not let's bring out a market you know, releases. Right. 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 Yeah. Because I think you created that market and they're like, let's get a piece of that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that kind of like segues. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Let, let's, let's put a bow on that one. Let's move on. <laughs> I was going to say, since we're talking about 5 POA, um, I kind of reached out to my local toy group and because I, I, I run like a, lo a local toy group here in Tallahassee, Florida. And um, it's kind of like this little network of hunters that kind of go out every day and we're like, hey, here's what's going on at this store. Here's what's at this store. If anybody needs this, I'll pick it up for you. And that's kind of how we are. I reached out to them. I was like, I'm going to have the opportunity to sit down and talk with Brian Flynn. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody like have like specific? And a lot of questions were, hey, ask him if they're making this figure and ask him if they're making that figure. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to do that. My right, but... are not announced yet. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, um, so one of the things that I, that I kept hearing from my friends is everybody kept talking about the price of reaction and saying that they feel like twenty dollars is too high for like five POA. And I just wanted to know, like, if you could talk a little bit about, you know, what drives the price for reaction figures? Is it manufacturing cost, quantity? Uh, is it licensing, or it is <laughs> all of the above? I think. I think one one is that the majority of people that buy and collect toys, especially if you're buying at Target and Walmart, you have no frame of reference to the actual quantities these things are made in. Let, let's start there and I'll, I'll, I'll break that down in a minute. And then secondarily, what prices should be. A lot of people, a lot of people uh, for mostly false reasons, uh, attribute articulation to value doesn't cost. Oh, yes. It does not cost that much different to make different articulation patterns. There's a little bit of time in assembly, but other than that, it's not like there's more plastic or less plastic or anything's up. Uh, it's more, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. Let me break them down in first part. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll use an example is where you buy it in the store. If you buy it in the back wall in the collector section of Target mm -hmm. versus if you buy it in the front of the store. Anybody can go online. You can look up some of the stuff. Like there are 2,400 roughly Target stores out there. That back wall section, sometimes it's four feet. Sometimes it's eight feet. Sometimes it's 12 feet. Sometimes it's no feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But for the most part, you're looking at about 1,200 doors in the back wall of Target. You know, but as far as the toy aisle, that's going to be in all 2,400 doors. The back wall, you know, the turn, how often that peg has to turn it's usually one to two sets per set time. So you're, you know, you see a set when we set a peg, it's usually set in fours. And then if it's a high volume store, it'll also get reset in fours. So that's eight, eight pieces. And if you've got four different characters, that's two pieces. So that means, you know, that's about 2,400 units. If you're talking about that toy section, that section has to churn at like a turn every week and a half, two weeks. So you're selling six times the volume on the toy aisle that you're expected to sell on that back wall. Um, so volume, obviously, is anybody that knows anything, volume drives pricing. And the biggest expense in making a toy is actually the tooling, is making the actual molds. Uh, there's the sculpt fees, there's engineering fees, there's safety testing fees. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that. The plastic is part of it, but marginally the smallest piece, if you will. Um, so if I, if we're going to make up, num we're going to use numbers that don't mean anything because otherwise people will attribute it. So we're going to say tooling costs $50,000 and it's say I'm selling 2,400 units and I amortize 50,000 across 2,400 units, that's going to cost me a little over, and we're going to say 2,500 units. That costs me $20 a unit just in tooling cost before I get mm. to plastic. But if I have that same $50,000 in tooling and I amortize it across 
15,000 or 20,000 units, now all of a sudden my tooling cost is $2.50 per unit. That's the long and the short of it. Why is it so expensive? Because I don't sell crap tons of these. Mm -hmm. The reason you can buy a toy, you know, and everybody also has this thing latent from whenever they started buying toys, like they should be $7.99, they should be $9.99, whatever. Go down to your local toy aisle and see if you can find something that is right. $7.99 or $12.99. Like even, you know, small inexpensive figures are fairly, you know, start at $12.99, $14.99, $19.99 is not uncommon. But they're like, I can get a WWE Legends for $19.99. Why is a reaction figure 1999? It's like, all right, you're in the boys' action aisle. How many shelves of WWE legends are they? How many pegs deep? Right. And they're selling it to Walmart as well, which is twice as many stores. That's 40, you know, 3,800 stores. Mm -hmm. You know, they're sell that that's how they get to be billion dollar companies. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's why their tooling costs them pennies on the dollar. Right. And you look, you can also look at the deco level and some of the packaging level, mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm not, you know, like if you're looking at our packaging, even on reaction figures, like I had to pay somebody to make that custom painting in most cases. So I love the art. Yeah. Right. It's I love not, your, I love you know, your packaging. If it's I'm, amazing. I'm, I can't even I'm, open this guy. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm looking at that WWE and I'm not trying to discount this product at all, I don't want anybody to take it as that. No. I don't it think. is like, but it's like, here's the box. They all look the same. And then I've got a photograph that's provided by WWE that I can drop in here. So there's no packaging cost to, to getting that executed. And then the level of deco, the level of some of the other stuff is, is, you know, pared down and then they'll have the more elaborate versions that are $29.99. So when you compare that to what we're doing and why it's $19.99, which it's been 1999 for like seven years. We haven't raised the prices on it. Um, it's it's that economy, it's that economy of scale and the expense to get it moving. Plus, I've got to sell it to Target at a discount right. so that they can get it out on shelf. Mm -hmm. I'm paying my licensors and <clears throat> everything else. So, <clears throat> yeah, it and it's not like oh, it's on the shelf at Target it should be half the price. It's like when I can sell the quantity that they sell in the boys action figure aisle, that's, that's a different art. Cause you can go in that boys action aisle now and you can find some really small cards. So they're not paying for paper three and three quarter, five POA figures. Like there's some Batman ones right now that I think are like seven 99. Mm -hmm. And if you pull that figure and you look at that Batman, I think it's got five deco hits, you know? Yeah. And, and they're getting yeah, I've seen those recently in there. Target. I'm not a not a fan of this. They're getting there through volume mm -hmm. and and that they're basically just paying for almost literally raw plastic. Like the cards are smaller, so the paper and the packaging dimension, like literally how much air you're putting into the box mm -hmm. to put into a container, like, oh, I've shrunk my shipping costs by 25%. You know, it's it's right. literally at those levels. And so it's not that. I in, in to be quite fair is and I'm sure people will disagree with me on this is like I actually think it's 1999 is underpricing the market quite honestly of where mm -hmm. it should be like if we really talk about when we first started and we went to San Diego Comic-Con with our aliens reaction figures 11 years ago I love they those. were going to be $25 a figure then yeah I love those mm. because that's mm. what that's what it was going to cost. That's what it was going to need to be to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's usually sort of a combination of of false parallels, or you know, or how you know people talk about you know you're trying to make apples and apples here because they're technically both toys and they're both in the same store, but they're not the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I think oh, that for that's sure. the hard 100%. part. Because if I'm talking about, um, I'm trying to think of a good example that I'm trying to to use is that, that like there, there's even just a cost of like moving the project along. There's a floor that you have to overcome. So like 
uh, how much of the Motu figures, the the retro Motu figures from Mattel? Oh, yeah, they've they've gone up. They're they're about nineteen ninety nine now. They're nineteen ninety nine yeah. now. You know, and then my version of that that I just made for Conan, the five point. You know, mine's twenty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you cannot, in any conceivable manner, anybody listening to this can go. Oh, he's selling as many Conans, not on shelf at mass as right. they are selling of Motu that I can buy at Target and Walmart in the boys' action sure. section. Mm-hmm. And th- those are, that's really the big discrepancy. And I think the other thing is that the the flip of the side is too, is that everyone believes that this market is massive. Every podcast I listen to, every forum I go to, everything that I do, is full of people that collect this. This mark, I just saw a news report that said adult collectors are the biggest you know, version right. of that. I saw that too. But that's not true. Right. Because that what that is, is they're saying, oh, any adult that buys this stuff, well, who buys stuff for their kids? Adults. Mm-hmm. Who's buying $400 Lego sets? Adults. Right. Like, that's skewing mm-hmm. it. It's not the guy buying the $19, you know. If it was, that boy's action section would be full of collector product. It's not. Right. Like, your right. GI Joe classified section is still only this big. Yeah, it's no, you're right. Black section right. is only this big, like mm-hmm. it's one or two pegs wide. It's not any wider than mm-hmm. that. There's a reason that that new Transformers movie that you don't even want to go see. I'm using it as a, a generic. So yeah, not talking shit about Transformers, a new movie is supposed to actually be very good. There's a reason that that's right. eight bays wide. Right. You know why? Because it's gonna sell like a mother. Yeah. And it sells a quantity right. that this stuff doesn't. So what I also say to people, and if anybody's stuck around in bad interviews with me before, because I'm always terrible at these things, is no, you're not. <laughs> is walk out of your house, go to your job, walk to go go to a restaurant, find anybody that you bump into that buys toys for collecting. You the rest of your you're life not. outside of here, nobody, nobody no. does. No. So this market that you think of that is pervasive and everywhere and somebody just paid 1.3 million for a boba fett it's crazy toys are taking over the world oh man we're still this yeah yeah this i remember I'm, scott that saying is the person saying that's this. here i'm telling mm-hmm. you as the person right. making it yeah nowhere right. near as many people are buying these things as you think that yeah go ahead mark i remember scott i, I was gonna say i remember scott Knightlick uh, from who used to work at mattel when yep. he used to do like his maddie collector stuff and uh i remember listening to a podcast with him and he's he said basically the same thing but he was saying this like years ago he was like you guys do not understand how you think it's this massive market but it's very very mm-hmm. small it's very niche and yeah. it's not as pervasive as you think it is and i yeah i mean he was correct and so i mean hearing that from industry insider, insiders is yeah, and I thank you for being so candid and like breaking down that process because it's something that I've heard a lot. And you know, like uh, I I love reaction whether it's you know like GI Joe or you know like you know my little I love sound waves. Anytime I you know yeah. see sound waves, I gotta grab me. But recently, you've pulled me in with these guys. My <laughs> wife came in and she goes, "Why are you collecting Sesame Street?" And I'm like, "It was such a big deal when I was a kid. kid. Like because I I've never it. been able to collect Sesame Street before. Yes. I didn't know that I couldn't." Yeah, I want right. to ask a quick question about like you mentioned tooling, and I wanted to go back. I, I we're still talking about reaction, um, but um, how isn't it expensive to keep making the tooling for all the new reaction as much reaction that you? So are you able to go back and reuse like here's the feet? I'll use the feet from this and put it on that. It's oh my very God. little reuse that no, we notice. There's almost reaction. no reuse. No. That's insane. Unless it's a recolor, there's no reuse. That, that's part of it too. It's like there's there's no right. reuse. I mean, people complain like, oh, you know, once again, whatever large line you're looking at, oh, they're reusing the mold. It's like, you know why they're reusing the mold? Like, because it yeah. it it brings up the sea level of everything. Mm-hmm. So uh it still blows my mind to this day when people complain about people reusing molds. And I'm like, did you not collect toys in the 80s? That's exactly what they well, like it's, it's, it's not- always been a it, it's just one of those things where it's like, then don't buy that one. Right. But but I but we all have that thing where but but then I'm incomplete. Yes. It, it, hold on. Oh. Yes. Absolutely. You know. Yes. Yeah. 
but it's not like, like people are seeing. trying to reuse tooling just to fuck with you. Yeah. You right. know, uh, you know, it's the same thing. Like uh, we were talking about, you know, we just got out of San Diego and I had all these people, multiple people ask me like, why you make it hard if I don't go to San Diego? It's like, I don't ever make a San Diego exclusive. That isn't anything that's the basic version. Mm -hmm. Like it's always some sort of off the beaten path version that if you don't need it, it's okay. Like it's okay to not have this and you can still have a complete line. If you look you at also, everything we made, huh? you also sell it on your website too. Like we, we, we make an allotment ready right. for everybody after yeah. the fact so that everybody has a chance. Mm -hmm. You never know which ones are going to be the one that like, okay, that lasted 10 minutes or lasted, you know, the goal is to give everybody a, a good day. You know, I, I don't want to make it hard for you, but I also want to have something that's a little bit special. Mm -hmm. And like for the people who can't make it out. Yeah. Well, right. not just for the people that make it out, but just for that moment in time. Like it's I'll use a bad analogy. If it didn't matter, you'd never go out to eat. You just eat the same thing at home. But like, you know right. what? I, you know, I want I want to go out someplace where they they do a really good version of this. I want to go mm -hmm. have pasta, I you know or you know I want never ending breadsticks right now. Mm. I'm going to go to the Olive Garden, <laughs> even though people are going to make fun of me for it because I don't care about anything else I'm going to eat. I just want to eat twelve of those breadsticks. Yes, absolutely. You know, you know that yeah, you go out for those moments Experience. for that thing. It's like or same thing. There's a barbecue place that I love. You know, and I sit outside and it's seven o'clock at night and there's a breeze and the kids are running around. You know, it's like that's why it, it it's doing something different and having fun within the mm -hmm. moment. And San Diego is one of those moments. So let's have fun with it. But I'm also not going to make it to be like, oh, that's the only place you can get Jaga. Like, why would you do that? Right. Like, Absolutely. Like, you know, instead, it's going to be you know what we did. If you're talking about G.I. Joe, it was Cobra Mortal. And a version of Zartan, as you saw in the beginning with the robe, it's not Zartan. Like mm -hmm. you can get Zartan, right. but if you want Zartan with the robe, oh, that's a fun moment. Like we can do that here, and we can talk about that, and then we can move on. Yeah, I still love that red, the red knock, the red Baroness. That's one of yep. my favorite. I adore that figure. The India one. Yep, I just love it. I love but it. But that, that's it. the thing. It's like that person is like yes i know what that is and i love it mm -hmm. and i'm into it but a person that's collecting gi joe doesn't have to have red knock to be complete right right you're like right it's a fun it's a fun thing it's not exactly. necessary yeah. but it's fun you know, it's a well, speaking thing. of fans who can sometimes be irate uh, <laughs> you mean uh the internet? How, yes uh how much does like have you guys ever had any instances where like maybe there was like fans that may have affected in some way like decisions with like a final product have you ever guys ever like oh, gone in and like tweet things all the time yeah we we get you know uh I, I always talk about it as like you know are you offering constructive criticism or are you complaining because if right. you're complaining I'm, i can't help you mm -hmm. so there there's there's a couple different things that happen here uh one is a lot of times when we make something that hasn't been made before People may have had it percolating in the back of their heads and their brains mm -hmm. for years. And so when you bring out something, if it's not the thing I thought it was going to be that I've been thinking about for years, that clearly everybody's been thinking about for years, it's fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. What the fuck are you guys doing? Right. You don't know what the right. fuck's going on. Yeah. You know, all that. Yeah. And Take it's it very not personal. bad. It's just not what you were expecting. Yeah. Back to our Olive Garden things. If they didn't show up, they were like, <laughs> oh. Yeah. I thought you ordered uh, just the big salad. It was like, no, I didn't order the salad. What the, the breadsticks? Bread Come on. <laughs> yeah. The whole point of me coming here was the breadsticks. And you yeah. don't bring me the breadsticks? No, I'm just kidding. I think Star yeah. Wars is like that too, where it's like people are, they have so this expectation in their mind. And when they present something new and fresh, people are automatically like, this is not what I, you know, this is. Exactly. So if, if somebody's just, or I think that there's quite a lot of people especially online that do actually like a lot of the stuff and want to collect it and have more of it but we do it's expensive there's a lot being made by a lot of people right now there's more toys being made at a better quality of more licenses than ever before mm -hmm. you can't get it all it's a lot easier for a lot of people to 
and make themselves feel better. I'm not saying it negatively, but like by just, I've got to tell myself I don't want this. And I'm going to pontificate how I don't want this because if I don't want this, then I don't feel bad about not being able to get it. Mm -hmm. And I use that in context. And the reason I say that is we noticed years ago when we were very small, we put out uh, images of product coming out. And if it got shitloads of comments of like, I love it. This is amazing. Can't wait to buy it. That figure was going to tank. Mm. And if that figure, if we put up an image of a figure and it was like a few people were like, yeah, that's cool. It would sell really well. And what the, what we deduced, whether true or not, was that when people were like, oh yeah, I'm going to get that. They didn't feel the need to comment or do anything else. They're like, yeah, cool. Like moving on. I mm. got it. And when people were like, I'm not going to get that, but I, that, that they somehow felt compelled to talk about it. And they'd be in, in, the, in those old days, it would be like, because we didn't make a lot. So you were kind of supporting all of us as a whole. It'd be like, oh, I love this. Can't wait to grab it or any number of other comments like that usually meant that actually that person was not going to buy. Mm. Uh, so coming backwards so when we go and I, we post pictures and somebody says hey you should change that head color you know i have to go okay are they correct or is it subjective mm -hmm. and sometimes it's oh we got it wrong sometimes it's look at this screen capture and it's like okay depending on what machine what version what they like it's eight different colors depending on which screen capture you look at or in some cases sure. the model sheets aren't even accurate to the show and like half the show he looks like this half the show he looks like that the spots move from one side to the other any number of other things mm -hmm. but there's definitely been times too where people are like uh i can't remember the guy's name but when we were doing bebop he was like oh you should totally do an alternate head that's painted like this and we're like oh fuck, that's a really good idea <laughs> and so we added it in and we sent him one that's awesome. You know, nice. So there's definitely things that people catch where if it's correct and smart and has a reason, like we will make those changes. You listen to reason. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's just, you know, people arguing for the sake of arguing, it's, it's, then, then we don't get there. It's, you know, the hardest one always is when we deal with ultimates is people complaining about, double jointed versus non double jointed mm -hmm. and you know i've made an aesthetic thing for years where i look at figures with double jointed things and i see the hexagons in the knees and i look at how much plastic you have to carve out underneath mm -hmm. the bicep and the forearm and behind the knees to make that function and i'm like i want these things to look like they walked right off the cartoon yes and I want to hide my articulation as much as possible into mm -hmm. natural seam joints like in the rib cages or in the biceps, which are very popular, mm -hmm. but in other places in the elbows, like where, where are those places I can hide those breaks so I don't see the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I want to see the manufacturing as little as possible. And people will be just like, well, it's shit because it's not double jointed. And it's like, okay, well, this, this elbow moves to, you know, 70 degrees. Right. Double jointed. I can do yeah. almost a full 180. Um, or a full, well, excuse me, 150 versus 180. But tell me what use case once you put it on your shelf. And I would argue to most of this, like, put the shelf but, behind you or you. Yeah. There's never a mm -hmm. use case other than when you first pull it out. Right. That you need that level of articulation. Right. Now, it's not to say that it's not cool. If you're a photographer, you totally want that. It's yeah. not to say that the <clears throat> function isn't better. But like when I'm, what I'm trying to make, not in all my toys, but in some of my toys, where it's like, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. A single joint is better than a double jointed. But then you'll have, you know, same thing, the commentary, like people get online. It's like, how dare you charge this price for something with shitty articulation? It's like, it's, it's articulation is not value, people. Right. This right. is an aesthetic choice. And do you like this toy at this yeah. scale and with this set of accessories? That is what we're selling you, not right. the fact that it has doesn't have, you know, it's like when people make art, you know, articulated toes. I'm like, I don't know when that's going to be necessary. No. 
I, I always yeah. didn't. I like was going to say, like, you know, Spider Man had that, and he just was floppy all the time with the yeah. too much articulation. I was going to say, um, you know, our name notwithstanding, that was more of a pun because there was two of us, and we were. Somebody once said to us uh, in a comment on YouTube that I thought was really funny. They were like, "We thought watching your show was going to be two guys talking about toys while smoking weed." And we're like, dang, we didn't think about that. That was a great idea. <laughs> Double jointed. <laughs> but um, but yeah, name notwithstanding, I I I buy different figures for different reasons. So like exactly. if I want if I want a Spider-Man that like has like that's super seamless and it's gonna have a cloth outfit, I'm gonna look at Mesco Spider-Man. If I want something that is super articulated, I may go Mafex or SH Figure Arts. But if I want something that's very cartoon accurate, which growing up in the eighties and my whole channel Saturday morning toy collector, that's that's what my channel is. That's the whole shtick behind my channel is that I love collecting. I mean, my rule for collecting is that I like to buy modern remakes of toys that I had that were based on Saturday morning cartoons. And, you know, I got to say, like, if it wasn't for you, like this right here, which is one of my favorite toys from all time when I was a kid, I wouldn't have this. Uh, you know, having, you know, Monstar at this scale, you know, I don't care if Monstar has single jointed elbows or double jointed elbows. It's like, I'm, really I didn't sure. buy that Monstar, yeah. you know, because of his posability. I, I buy him so that I can have him on my shelf in my, in my, you know, the in happiness my, that it, it brings in my, in my, ha in my, uh, my castle of, you know, contemplation yeah. here, you know, like I like to look at things that, that remind me of the cartoon that I used to watch and the toys that I used to have. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I will commend you guys. Like I, I wanted to, you know, give you guys a shout out because you know, I've been a longtime fan, a longtime buyer of Super 7, and there's been in many instances where you guys have released a product and after the fact fixed something, and then you didn't have to, like, go out of your way to, like, send us new parts, whether it was, like, Panther's Pants or, you know, anything like that, but you did. There's very few companies, like, after the fact that make changes and then make it right by the by the buyer you know a lot of people are just like oh there's a running change in this gi joe classified series figure we're just going to fix it and put it back on the shelf but you know you and i would say like four horsemen as another company that i've had you know where they've reached out and said hey we we improved this we made it better and we want to give you guys the extra pieces to you know make it better at home and uh yeah. i really appreciate that well, that's very nice of you. Thank you. And the horsemen are absolutely wonderful people as well. Uh, they really are. That whole crew. They're just, they're just beautiful people, you know, uh, and they, they helped us immensely when we were getting started as well. And uh, all, all of them are absolutely great. Um, but yeah, you were, yeah, you were holding uh, up Greg and I were the, big the back metal. You were holding up the back metal. Yes. Silverhawks for them. Same. It's like, that's another thing is like, look, we made, look, I know what we sold of the original Silverhawks and what we sold of the back metal. And contrary to popular belief, we sold more of the animation accurate than we sold of the vac metal. That, that bothered me because I remember you saying like in another interview that a lot of people didn't order the vac metal and like it hurt my feelings because it's like, you guys, if you're a fan, buy the stuff. If it's good, buy it. You bought the cartoon version. That's Brian's idea. Of having the animated, now he's making back metal. Don't take it personal. Well, just it's not even it. just don't take it personal. It's like we heard you. We heard you screaming about it for however long, and so we spent all this time figuring out how to make it work. So, in in that regard, though, I'm not trying to be negative. I sound negative, no. and I don't want to be. It's like so we did it. Like my job isn't to give you shit you hate. But if you're telling me, look, look, I bought these, but I actually still want these back metal, like it would be far easier for us to be like, yeah, sorry, we can't execute it instead of spending a year and a half working on it. Like we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure it out. And we did. And, uh, you know, that that's the thing. It's like it's you know, the, the narrative turns to you just fucked us over and you wanted to just sell this twice. So you made me buy the one I didn't want. It's like, actually the narrative is I sold you the one I was making, but because you asked so much about having one with back metal, I also spent an extra year and a half to make it. Right. And yeah, it all just depends on your it point of view. There's, there's some people that doesn't, and that's where it comes back to like, are you just complaining? Cause I'm not going to worry about your commentary. Yeah. Like if it's right. just, you're pissed about it and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, I don't care then like yeah. not not to be negative yeah. it's just like what am i gonna do i'm not gonna make you happy 
just go beyond oh, yeah. half. Sometimes you could just yeah something yeah we we talk about this a lot with like Star Wars you know it's like you know um, people complained that and uh, you know uh, Force Awakens was a rip off of A New Hope and they were like this is the same old Star Wars we've always had so I don't like it and then Ryan Johnson the first half gives of you Force Last Awakens Jedi. the first half of Force Awakens is phenomenal. I agree. Absolutely phenomenal. I, I you can argue, you can argue all the way up. Sort the comedic of comedic beats. What? I said the comedic beats are just spot on, perfect. You care yeah. about Ray. You understand her story and her origin. Like Finn, Poe, they're all great. It's sort of all kind of you know. It gets. Is it is it as resolved as we would like when they're going on to Star Killer Base? No, but. So what? Like that first half of that movie is absolutely pitch perfect, uh, right. and and while we can have qualms with the other half as a whole, it's a it's it's a great Star Wars film. I mean, how many people complained about the acolyte? You know, I thought there were some really interesting. Yeah, we were just talking about that. that. We were just talking about that. Yeah, that's a you know, shame. There's some really interesting things that are happening in there. Uh, that they're not apparently going to get to explain, but you know, there was that cameo real quickly of the old Sith Lord in the cave mm -hmm. that you don't get to hear about, or what yeah. we assume is a Sith Lord, you know, right. there was definitely some other moment, you know, it definitely had its moments where it struggled a little bit was just connecting with the characters a little bit more, but as a whole, was it bad and terrible and awful by no means. And I think it's, you know, and I think for a lot of people, it was like, well, uh, you, you can't have black people in Star Wars. And I'm like, fuck, I'm, I'm so Lord, tired. I'm actually, this is the exact same conversation Greg and I have had so many times. Yeah, yeah I kind of talk it up uh, to the same thing. I The way I collect toys is the same way I enjoy my entertainment and my media. It's like I lived in a time where we had three Star Wars movies and that was all we were getting. And then I lived in a time where we had six Star Wars movies and that's all we were getting. And now I live in a time where I have so much Star Wars. Like if I was brand new to it, I don't know if I could absorb it all in time. And it's the same way with action figures. I lived in a time where the only Thundercats and, and Silverhawks figures that I had were the ones that when I was a kid. And now I live in a time where I can buy them like any day, any day I want. And it's just things like that. Just, it just filled my heart with joy. It's like, those are the types of things that I live for. It's yeah. like, I, I definitely look on the, on the brighter side of, um, um, of things like that. But since we're on Silverhawks, um, I did have a Silverhawks question uh, and I'll just kind of like throw it in since we're talking about it. And I was wondering um, if the, if the line is going to continue, are you guys going to put out oh, yeah. some more newer characters it's, along with like back metal and uh, the other yeah, th there's there's another Silverhawks wave like imminent. Like, I think next wave, next couple weeks maybe. No, and wait, sure. fingers yeah. crossed for flashback. Does anybody remember flashback? Uh, the, I, the I, 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 I don't know. Uh, look, look. Uh, I'm just gonna say you know because people keep asking about yeah you know, between Thundercats and uh, Silverhawks. Like they're like, where's Melodia? I was like, don't worry, this is coming. Flashback, don't worry, we're gonna get mm. to flashback. We're gonna get to two. We're gonna get to yes, man. There's, there's plenty of. We're, we're gonna get to, whether they're in this wave or another wave. We're gonna get to them. So nice. Very. So exciting. you don't see yeah. any any um, any end to like Thundercats or Silverhawks or like GI Joe Ultimates anytime soon. Like that's all I mean, still going pretty strong. Thundercats. We're you know we're three or four waves away from now. We're working on stuff right now. Silver Hawks, we're a couple waves away. We're working on stuff. GI Joe, we're working on some stuff, but it's more transitioning to in stock. You know what we've seen is that Joe customer just will not place a pre order. You know, uh, they, I don't understand that. <laughs> uh, you know, if you think about if you're coming from the world of GI Joe, aside from a Haslab. And if that's your focus, because a lot of those guys are focus collectors, like I mm -hmm. only live in GI Joe or GI Joe plus one other license, you know, you don't have to place anything on pre-order unless it's a HasLab. Everything is, I buy it when it comes out. And the idea of placing a pre-order and waiting 12 months to get it, it's proving to be difficult. And what happens is we sort of make to order, you know, sometimes some of our other customers will bump up their orders for you know what they believe is demand and then once what we've seen is once the gi joe product lands the demand jumps way up and we have mm. no inventory so that just really tells us that that buyer is not willing to do that 
So you adapt business wise we're, to yeah. You know, when we were smaller, we didn't have, when we were smaller, we didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the 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 ideal scenario is the pre order because I don't make too few or too many. If I make too few and the secondary market jumps, like I said, if it's Silverhawks, I made a thousand Silverhawks as an easy number, and there were nine hundred people looking, and I had a hundred pieces extra. There's nobody to buy them. Like there's a cliff to collecting. Mm -hmm. And so then they go on discount, they go on clearance to get rid of those last hundred. Everybody's like, it's easy to get. It's not worth the money you pay for it. I'm going to wait till it goes on clearance and then they quit buying. If I make a thousand and there's 1,100 people that want them and 100 people didn't get them, the only way to get those is to pry them out of the hands of the people that bought the thousand. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden it's like, oh, I want to collect that line, but Lion O is now $250 on the secondary market. No one's going to get, you know, no one's willing to get rid of it. They never come up for sale. It's too expensive. I won't collect the line. So mm -hmm. the pre-order takes care of all of that. Right. I got a month. Anybody that wants it can buy one. You can buy as many as you want. It doesn't matter. Like every everybody that wants one gets one. Well, no it seems like the, the vacuum. Everything metal. else is guessing. Yeah, the vac metal seems like it's rare. Like I, I thought, oh, I'll buy another one of both of the vac metal ones, and I have not seen them anywhere to be able that, to buy. That, that, back to my earlier point, mm -hmm. people did not buy the vac metals the way they bought. So there's the less first ones in the market. So there's now. just less. So the only way to get another vac metal one is to pry it out of the hands of somebody that pre-ordered it. Well, hopefully, they learn their lesson now. They're like, oh shit, I missed out on on you know. Quicksilver, and, and so maybe I need to, you know, pre-order the next time so that it yeah. ensures me get, you know, that I get some. Would you rerun those past two? I think, you know, generally speaking, we've only done it a couple times. Uh, the first wave of turtles, the first two waves of turtles that we did, the demand was so strong that not mm -hmm. only against us, but you know, from a lot of our partners, whether that's Big Bad or Entertainment Earth or mm -hmm. Diamond, they're all like, we need more turtles. We need more turtles. So we all said, all right, how many do you need? We went back and made all those turtles. Well, now all those turtles are, some of those turtles are still on clearance because they made, mm -hmm. we made too many. Yeah. You know, and that's the hardest part with, in the collector thing of once again, how many do you make? When you're talking about a $20 reaction figure, that's one thing. When you're talking about a $55 to $85 ultimate, it's a whole different beast. Right. And uh, ideally, we stick in pre-orders when we can. So with G.I. Joe, it's like the people that buy that line love that line. but And we see the demand when the product arrives, but we don't see the demand at the initial pre-order window at the level that it would, we would normally make it at so mm. we're trying to see if what happens when we make it in stock yeah does that move the needle in a different way yeah well i'm glad yeah. you're still keeping it going because I, I i really enjoy the line um, i you know and i'm not saying it because we make it but it's like to me those I mean, obviously i we're making the versions that i think i want yes. in a lot of ways but it's like man they look like they just walked up. They the do. Screen. I've never seen a GI Joe that looks like this. Yeah, they really do. You know, I yeah, that. I love it that they would. When you come out with like the sunbow designs, the colors, I was like, this is brilliant. I snapped them up. I, I'm a, I'm a fan um, for sure. Um, uh, yeah, but definitely. that class, but it's that same of, thing. It's that same thing though, because that's where the classified guy sits there and goes, but doesn't have double jointed things and a rocker pelvis. So, well, it's a good thing you can buy both. But that's why they make classified. Go buy that from classified. Right. Don't buy. Don't buy it from. Absolutely. Them. Okay. Um, speaking specifically of GI Joe, um, something that I noticed um, with your with your O ring Joes is that it is a um, like a reaction plus. Yeah. Line and uh, I don't know. Sorry if this has been addressed somewhere else and I just didn't catch it. But this seems kind of new to me. Is, is this something that's new specifically for like? the o-rings or is this going to be like yeah, something that, you guys will carry over to other licenses the o-ring manufacturing process if you will we're calling reaction plus and if you really look at the reaction mm. plus logo it's a plus inside of a circle so the o the circles o for o-ring and the plus is the screw that goes in the back clever so very clever it, brilliant 
but it's still it's, it's almost a like retro a designer had a hand in that. Yeah, it's a, you know it's still a retro action figure, but this is the O ring configuration. So Reaction Plus is the O ring configuration. And is that just going to be for GI Joe, or that might be for other figures, or is that top secret? Okay, okay, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> when can we expect these these uh, GI Joe O ring? G.I. Joe O-Ring will be on shelf uh, in October. so uh, Very exciting. Yeah, you'll be able to walk into your local Target and buy it in October. Do we have a nice retail price for that yet? Have you talked They're about it? They're $19.99. Uh, and like, wow. technically they should be $24.99. I, that's what I thought do, you'd say. But, but we do believe that we're going to have increased volume. Mm -hmm. with these compared to where we would normally be and that we can make it work at 1999 but we're also betting that it's not going to happen in wave one but by the time we get to really wave the mm -hmm. orders for wave two that the increased volume will be allow us to be at and maybe price some vehicles lower. maybe um not really i mean the reality no. is the reality is most every gi joe vehicle has been made like there are very few vehicles that haven't been made. That's why we ended up with the mothership way back when. That was uh, a gorgeous. I'm sorry about that, but that was freaking gorgeous. You know, and you know, I've had person. a lot of people ask me about it too. And it's like, well, maybe if the O-ring line picks up and people have an interest, we mm -hmm. can try to try it again at some point. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Um, I, you know, I was a little bit surprised, but at the same time, not everything's going to work. I mean, and to expect everything to work would be, silly uh but it was a big it's also big and expensive and if you think Gorgeous. about it with in a lot of collectors you know how many of us jettisoned vehicles at some point because there wasn't enough room in the and it's like i'm just gonna we were, we were just talking about that like we heard maybe you might do mask maybe so we we're wondering like you know the vehicles is that possible would we have room in our on our shelves for that, or just the figures? Um, which which your thoughts, or or do you have our? Do you I have the mask? Speak about the mask. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> uh, I will just yeah. I will, yeah I will just say this like I I know, um, I know that you can't have mask without vehicles. I mean, it's the whole point. No, no, no. I mean, that that's the, the whole thing. Is like I don't think people care about the drivers. Right, but I will tell you this, and I was telling Greg before you before you came on, I was like, if Super Seven made reaction mass drivers and that was it, and it was just the drivers in their helmets, I'd buy every damn one. Maybe you would, maybe you could, maybe you you would only be making them for me, but uh, <laughs> I, I would buy every single one of them because I love those little guys. I would used to, I used to have like my mom would wash them in my shorts because they were always in my pockets. I used, would carry around like two or three of them. And I still have like five or six mass figures from when I was a kid, and they're they're lost paint, they're rubbed all up, and they're just. But yeah. I love them, like man, that's yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, yeah, maybe one day we'll, uh, we'll maybe, hear something maybe about one it. Day. Um, maybe one day. Yeah, um, one of the things that um, we did get a question about was um, I, I know one of my friends was a backer of the Cat Slayer, and they wanted to know if you had a update for the. For how that's going, uh, how the production's I, going. I, 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 I do. Uh, here, we'll do this real quick. Um, just. Oh, man. I should have had I've a scoop. I've never seen you move ready. anywhere before. Hold on. Hold on. Um, what's for. Oh, my <laughs> God. <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> out of town. So there's a test shot. Wow. So. Do I have an update for you? Yes, we're we're in the throes of you know tightening up everything, tightening up the engineering. Um, I know that there's a plan for when the artwork for the box is going to get released, uh, but that would be on the marketing team. I can't remember exactly what they said. They had a moment that they were trying to do with it all, and um, uh, soon we'll put out some sort of email to everybody that backed it, showing like, hey, here's where we're at, but. Um, yeah, we're we're in the throes of just like okay, you know, polish mm. this. We need to add this. We need to tighten this up. We need to do that. So we're we're in the, the throes of it. So we're Very trying exciting. to in person. It was astounding. It's astoundingly large. Yeah, it is astounding. Yeah, 
large. Yes. That's a this is a record. this was a project that I literally had to talk myself out of, and my I was showing it to my wife, and she was like, "You're not about to tell me what you're about to tell me," because she knew I was like, "I'm I'm buying this," but I was like, "I, I just want to show you how awesome this is, and I want to show you that I have control my happiness." Yeah, I want to show you the sacrifice that I'm giving up for not getting. I have literally have no room for it. Uh, it would be like uh, the crowning jewel of my collection. I just have zero room for it. I have no space for it. Well, as, as uh, I said many times at that point, like if there was a, a, a cliff or a line of like, OK, when is it too much? Like. We have two toes just kind of hanging over the edge. We're <laughs> looking over like right. It's right at the edge where it's like, okay, you've gone too far. Um, mm -hmm. It is, but at the same time, it is for what it is. It's super impressive. It's, it is, it's fan it service. Is. It's amazing. Um, Can I ask it, uh, yeah. for people that did not pre-order will there be like retail, like big bad toy store available kind of thing or not really? Uh, you would have to check in with them. I mean, uh, we don't, we're not bringing extras in, if mm -hmm. that makes any sense. So, okay. you know, uh, th those places sometimes hedge their bets and think that there may or may not be, but I don't know where they are. So okay. if they have any available, it's going to be, you know, it would be on their website now. Like, I don't know if you can order it or not still. Okay. Okay. So, but it's, it's crazy. It's beautiful. It's it's, beautiful. I, I have not seen it in person. Greg has. Um, but yeah, it's it is beautiful. And you know what? Kudos to you guys, even on the the Jejo mothership, taking big swings. Like to I me, agree. it's all about taking a big swing. And it really doesn't matter if, you know, at the end of the day, if it succeeds or fails. Like, of course, everybody wants it to well, succeed. You guys it, want there's, it to there's succeed. There's a certain part of like <laughs> costs a lot of money to sculpt and output and engineer and right. get something ready to go so when it doesn't work yeah. it's like okay well there's a yeah there, there's, there's a bunch of expense there plus obviously sure. budgetary revenue that now we have to find someplace else you know kind of thing i think what he's right, saying is we appreciate you guys at least swinging you know and trying yeah. and and putting it out there like i i heard you say one time that your your company is a boutique company you know like you can't really? compare us to hasbro and and i think i wish people would understand that more that that you're making um things for us fans you know you're not mass producing shit um you know, like hasbro or whoever it, it's just a whole different thing like you know people, somebody will be like oh but you're at target i'm like okay go to target and count how many pegs i'm on right you know it's like oh you're right. on four pegs at target and you have no right. pegs at walmart like yeah that should yeah. tell you the true scale of this right there yeah yeah i go through this a lot because um i'm a comic book artist and i write and draw my own comics i color i do i do everything i do the whole thing and it's the same way like i you know like i sell a comic book at a show uh it's 30 pages i have to sell it for eight dollars because it costs me 450 to print it or 550 to print it Whereas, you know, Marvel can sell a comic book for four ninety five because they just printed six million of them. You know, it's just there's a difference. You know, I printed one hundred and fifty and I have to cover my own cost. And so, yeah, you know, I I go through this quite a lot. You know, friends are like, you make money like selling them at that price. And I'm like, I have to sell them at that price. I have no option. Like, yeah, I yeah. could sell them for three dollars and take a four dollar loss. But what good is that doing me? You know, right, but right. I, I mean, but that's the point. I, my my guess though is that greater than that is part of the reason to make the comics is the act of making it is the important right. part. The then getting it, it makes me happy and getting it in other people's hands is great when you can, you know, within you know reason. You know, being like obviously everybody, we'd all love to have more people visible to our work. But even if you knew you could only ever sell a hundred of every comic ever. You wouldn't be like, well, I'm going to stop because this isn't worth it. You're like, no, I got to make it. Mm -hmm. And 100 people bought them, like paid yeah. to right. buy them because they love it. got to be too. satisfying. That was the way we used Yeah, to you know how this is. Like, I'm a creator. I have to create. If I if I don't create, then I don't know what my purpose is. And we, we talked like, about at the end of the day, I'm not. Yeah. 
I was about to say, we, we would talk about this when we talk about old punk stuff. Like when we were making those records in the 80s, like no one was expecting them to ever sell. That was never the goal. But the idea like for 500 bucks, we could press 507 inches. And if I got 200 people to pay $3 each, like we would, we're ahead. Mm -hmm. But that means 200 people that I've never met, maybe I've met them, but I never met got to hear my band right. and kept it and liked it. Like how magical is that? Right. That's the same thing when we talk about all these toys. I mean, it's the same thing. Like before, the, you know, we've met at some shows, Greg, uh, and everything, but like we would, I made these toys. I've never met you. And mm -hmm. yet you got them and we're like, oh my God. Yes. Look at this, how I feel. That like, feeling of excitement. How magical. Like I get to do that. That's amazing to me. Yes. And yeah. so when you asked earlier about the drudgery of the internet or whatever, it's like, I know how many we sell. I know how many haters mm -hmm. are in the comments versus how many we sold. Yeah. I know that 95% more people got it and were it and loved it. Mm -hmm. and that was something the exciting part. That was something like when I, I talked to you at, at New York comic con and, and I felt like you had gotten beat up on something about <laughs> it was like <laughs> telling which one it was. It was and I just, I thing. felt bad because it's like, you're a person, you know, you're a human being, you're doing the best you can. You're creating, you're trying to give us what we want. And I'm like, and I, and I tried to convey to you, I'm like, Brian, don't take it personal. Like, it's not like they hate you individually. It's just people are so passionate and critical. And sometimes they tend to be negative, but you know, I want you to know, like there's, there's a lot of us that are like, we appreciate everything that you do. We love your stuff. Keep doing it. Keep making, keep, you know, don't listen to the, the negative part. Listen to us buying it and being happy. Yeah. And I think we, we all try to do that. And it's, you know, I want to be very clear. It's not just me. It's me. It's Josh. It's Kyle. It's Nick, right. It's Eric, right. The whole team. It's, Diego, it's, it's Dennis. It's, you know, it's mad. It's actually, it's like, it's the entire team of people that are all putting this into it. And yeah, there's definitely things where sometimes we get beat up more than others, but you know, I always used to say too, is like with commentary, I, we listen to it and we have to filter it as we said, because you know, a lot of times, you know, the reason people are commenting all that because they do love it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it's possessive. like, some, possessive. It, well, it's possessive, but it's, there's that same thing. It was like, I love this so much and it's so close to what I want, but not quite that it's almost worse than if it didn't exist at all kind of thing <laughs> yeah. for some people. So I, I, I try to always take a lot of that with a grain of salt of like, you know, same thing. Is this just passion that doesn't know how to articulate mm. itself or any number of other things? Uh, and I generally find that even that with some of the people that you do know who they are and they are, you know, acting crazy online, you meet them in person and they're like, oh, man, like, I'm so sorry about this and that. You don't even have to bring it up. And you're like, oh, OK. You know, um, in general, the vast are the vast interactions that we have within this vernacular are all positive. Mm -hmm. It's great fun. Good uh i'm glad about but that the same thing like if you're on the social side of it it's just you know what you see is what people like I, i'll i'll go backwards for both of you the things that you love you don't feel the need to talk about them online right you know you don't go online and be like man i had a wonderful work day at work today and i had a ham sandwich that was toasted just perfectly with the mayo <laughs> right. or whatever you know you're not talking about that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. generally speaking i would say that if you're in that place most of the time in your life you're not also talking about anything like that you right. may be spending some moments and then the more negativity usually is coming from people that are upset about things that have nothing to do with us i agree yeah and, but they don't, I don't think they realize it, not to be too psychological. I think for a lot of people, you are correct. That they, yeah. don't. they don't, but, they don't, what, they don't grasp that they're, that they're just spewing toxic negativity. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I've had a lot of people too kind of complain on my own channel um, in my reviews that I, that I, I don't complain enough, that I don't 
knock a lot of the things, you know, for, for things that other people would, you know, knock it or complain. It. And I'm like, well, people really don't send me a lot of free stuff. I've only had like one or two companies actually do that. I was like, I'm spending my own money and I buy what I like. I'm not buying stuff so I can come home and complain about it. Like, I don't have that kind of money. Like, you know, I like to, you know, I buy what I love and I, I love to gush about it, you know? Um, you know, if I bought something that I was really excited about and there was a problem, of course, I'm going to address it and call it out. But, you know, um, at the same time, though, you know, but it's that, like that, I, that, I love that, to share the awesomeness of like yeah. what I love with other people. But but that mentality that somehow there has to be a pro flaw, that you're not being honest if there's not a flaw. I don't get it. It's just a mentality I don't understand. I don't either. Like, like, why can't it just be awesome? Like, there was never a time. Like some stuff's just put, perfect. Same thing. There was never a time where I fucking rode a skateboard and thought, well, you know, this would be so much better if this or that. It's like, no, fuck, this is great. This is great. And, yeah. You know, and, you know, I'll watch some. I don't really watch many of the reviews, but you watch some and they'll be like, well, this arm isn't quite at the right tension, you know, but, you know, this is wrong. And it's like, all right, like, what temperature is it in your house right now? Like, I'll call you. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like, and, 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 you know, I, I, I find that the idea that to be critical, you have to be negative is completely incorrect. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be critical yeah. and positive at the same time. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. I, th there's definitely some people, uh, there's a couple prominent YouTube people that I know that they don't, you wouldn't see them talking to me that much, but they're like, you know, I've heard them say, you know, because they're they're well known for being a bit more negative. And they're like, dude, if I if I'm not if I don't title my YouTube video negatively and I don't spend the first uh, five minutes being negative, I, I can spend the next 25 minutes being positive. Then my algorithm goes down. Yeah. Like I have to do it to to maintain yeah. the algorithm. I've heard or this. you have somebody that's just like a, there's, you know, like, God the amount of hate pixel dan gets and it's like dude all right let's stop for two seconds like dan was doing this dude's a sweetheart 18 years ago 20, mm -hmm. 15 years ago before any of you were even collecting toys right he just likes stuff so whether you think he likes he's being pandering or not it's like no he likes stuff like how dare <laughs> I, like it's what is the thing i'm not defending him as like a friend it's just like dude like he was here before any of you and now you all want to show up and be like that dude sucks he's not critical enough right he's just a yeah. shill it's like what what part of this were, yeah. were you around for the 18 years of this like right like yeah. and when something I like stuff that right, brings me he'll joy say, yeah. he'll say it but mm -hmm. for the most part any of these toys like you can take any of our manufacturers me you know like name name whatever collectible manufacturer you want to name right now or hasbro or mattel mm -hmm. guaranteed that toy is 99 percent fucking rad hell yeah and there I there's agree. no oh well the engineering on this is terrible and they screwed up all this it you're 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 looking for one percent mm -hmm. and you're gonna find it if you go looking for it but the reality yeah. is they're great and then the guys well this, the detail is soft on this it's like i don't know how many sculpting classes you've gone to or whatever right like, absolutely uh, like all, all of that stuff so i'm on a tangent now but it's like you can go pick up anybody's stuff and people be like oh that's mass market crap and it's like really like even that we talked about earlier those price point wwe figures for 1999 it's a phenomenal figure phenomenal it's fun. They're right. fun. you should you should be right. ecstatic that right. you're getting to pay 1999 for that like like these toys aren't crap nobody's toys are crap right they're all yeah. absolutely amazing well so. i mean back in the day in the 70s we had the kinner star wars line that only had the five and we were so thrilled you know we didn't say oh luke's arms didn't bend this is bullshit you know we were like yeah. so yeah. happy or well, it's I was so happy when I got like, my Luke Skywalker that had the, the the little sliding arm because I also had a Luke Skywalker that just held the lightsaber like a like a sword, 
but like I was happy with both of them. You know, like I was like, I don't care how it works. Like this is awesome either way. But but you know, same thing. Like you can go pick up like right now whatever figure, and somebody will complain that the arm, t- you know, it needs to have thirty six pieces of articulation, and the arm tension, the tension on one disc on one arm is suboptimal. Right today, maybe yeah. not even tomorrow. Yeah, and it's like, dude. That figure is phenomenal. Yeah. Like, I it's, agree. it's great. Uh, is and, there any and, yeah. dream projects um, that you haven't? That That's the hardest part is every time I, I can't talk about them. Because if okay. I talk about them, somebody else is going to go after them. Oh, I didn't think about I'm, that. Or they aren't out yet, or I'm still working on it. Like, Okay, I, mean, I understand. I understand. Uh, yeah, that's the one where I'm like, I used to talk about those. I can't talk about them anymore. Because then other people are like, oh, that's a really good idea. It's like, oh. But, you yeah, know, I, I, can talk I think, about, you know, we all kind of have. Go ahead. No, I was about to say, but I can talk about things that have come out where, you know, sometimes they're not the obvious things. Like same thing like uh, for San Diego, you saw the first of the super cycles, mm-hmm. the creature from the Black Lagoon on the tricycle, which is like that was the fun. 60s and 70s and 80s Japanese tricycle figures. Like, yeah. I love those figures. I collect them like those are things where, yeah, it's not like the secret license and format that maybe everybody's expecting, but it's still one of those, like, what are those dream projects? Mm-hmm. Well, that was one of them. Like no one else is going to go down this route. Here's something that's really weird and niche that I love that are super cute. Yeah. Like let's go down that route and make it. Let's see what happens. I remember I saw it and I was yeah. just like, Oh shit. Okay. Yep. That's super seven. Yeah. You know, I just thought it was hilarious and fun and, and original and cool. Um, yeah, but that, that's those, okay. those I was are parts of the dream that. projects, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, that's probably a really good place to like to end it, and uh, we'll <laughs> let you get back. You know, we've we've taken up a, a lot of your time, and thank you for being so gracious. Oh no, are you kidding? Uh, I get to talk about toys. And... I feel like I rambled a little too much. Not at all. No, we would love is, for you to come back. Perfect, to you know. Yeah. No, I. I yeah, I, absolutely. I would. Yeah, it would be great to come back. I mean. We can talk about something else. I don't know what we can talk about. I keep seeing the peaks behind Greg's head. Is is that the animated Shira up there? What what are you seeing? And uh, little to the left, little to the left, little right there. Which one's that? That's uh, Yoko from uh, Gurren Lagann. Ah, okay. From here, it was like I could see a little bit of the red with the gold and the blonde. I was like, My is that Shira? Fat heads in the way. Yeah, I was like, I love to see what other movie? people have. I love yeah. to see other people's, you know, collections and things. I, I had I had to change this up because uh, beforehand it was like all sorts of stuff, and then I would do videos about a particular toy line, and we had a couple of people go like, "It's really great that you're doing an article on pick a license." I'm not going to use anybody's name, but he goes, mm-hmm. "But the background's full of somebody else's stuff." So, okay. <laughs> so you don't have to surround yourself. So now, now it is just the Super Seven mascots, so and no one can complain. Is that your studio or is that your home? This is the office. Okay, it's awesome. So now was... that's why the background is full of Mummy Boy and stuff. Mummy Boy. So no one, no one can complain about that. Abs- well, they, right. they might still. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> that's why you. But here. honestly, thank you, uh, thank you so much. Thank your wife. Thanks for having me, guys. Team. Um, how many, how many real quick, just how many people are on the super seven team at this point? Uh, the funny part about that is I used to say that I actually had somebody tell me once that I'm not, I shouldn't say that anymore simply okay. because other people use it as a backward metric to figure out size of business and all this other, oh, she was like, okay. you know, she was like, you don't want, it's not that on the fan side, but they were like, you ever the people that view this industry as competition which is not everybody because i'm very much a look we're all doing stuff rising tide but there are other people that will use that to oh okay to that makes sense determine things about your business i'm just like that is a shame crazy people just but, love well, anyway, i would say that we have an amazing team of wonderful people across you do. all of it and i'm not like i don't give them enough public shout outs i've got to Please thank them for us. We're 
yeah. huge fans of the absolutely whole um your your sculptors your painters your digital artists your packaging people your marketing people your sales your shipping department your social media department every yep. everybody that works there that behind the scenes whether we know them whether we don't know them thank them all uh we know that it, it takes an entire village to make this happen um thank you for being such an open and um you know integral part of the team i'm, I'm glad that you take the time to talk to not just us but all the other youtube channels that you you know take time out of your busy schedule to sit thank and talk you. with i super appreciate it um you are absolutely one of my favorite companies anytime um i get a chance to like proselytize i'm like th these people are literally remaking my childhood like th my shelves are now the way that i wish they looked you know when i was 10 years old and if somebody had told my 10 year old self that your 48 year old self is going to be enjoying these more than you are right now like i don't think i would have believed them but um uh it, it really is the fact that i get to hold uh, an invisible type you know uh tigra in my hands and he is like like this just makes me so happy like, we do need another just... version of panthro though there's only one version so far i think of panthro oh listen this complainer <laughs> I cannot say I'm just, anything. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I, and you, know, you signed my only Panthro, so I need another. <laughs> yeah, there, 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 there might be more Panthros in the All future. All right. All right. We appreciate you, well, Brian. Thanks, thanks again. So no, damn much. Thank you guys very much. It's very, very, you, you guys are being very generous with your compliments, and, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, having fun is the whole point. And, Absolutely. Uh, Keep it fun. Thank you again people. for having me. It. Yeah. Keep it fun. Yep. People. Uh, have a good rest of your afternoon, and I hope you get all your kids picked up. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you, Brian. Bye. Take care. All right. Thank you, guys.